An Attempt to Account for Jesus by Alexander McLaren But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This man doth not cast out demons, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. Matthew 12, verse 24 Now, at this stage of my sermon, I must not be tempted to say a word about the light which our Lord throws in these declarations in the context into that dim, unseen world. His words seem to me to be too solemn and didactic to be taken as accommodations to popular prejudice, and a great deal too grave to be taken as mere metaphor. And I, for my part, am not so sure that, apart from him, I know all things in heaven and earth, as to venture to put aside these solemn words of his, which lift a corner of the veil which hides the unseen, and to dismiss them as unworthy of notice. Is it not a strange thing that a world which is so ready to believe in spiritual communications when they are vouched for by a newspaper editor is so unwilling to believe them when they are in the Bible? And is it not a strange thing that scientists who are always taunting Christians with the importance they attach to man in the plan of the universe, and ask if all these starry orbs were built for him, should be so incredulous of teachings which fill the waste places with loftier beings. But that is by the way. What does Christ say in the context? He tells the secret of his power. I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons. And then he goes on to speak about a conflict that he wages with a strong man and about his binding the strong man and spoiling his house. All which, being turned into modern language, is just this, that the Lord, by his incarnation, life, death, resurrection, ascension, and government at the right hand of God, has broken the powers of evil in their central hold. He has crushed the serpent's head, and though he may still, as Milton puts it, swing the scaly horror of his folded tail, it is but the flurries of the dying brute. The conquering heel is firm on his head. And so, brethren, evil is conquered, and Christ is the conqueror. And by his work in life and death, he has delivered them that were held captive of the devil. And you and I may, if we will, pass into the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. That is the only explanation of him in his person, in his character, in his work, and in the effects of that work in the world that covers all the facts and will hold water. All others fail, and they mostly fail by boldly eliminating the very facts that need to be accounted for. Let us rather look to him, thankful that our brother has conquered, and let us put our trust in that Savior. For, if his explanation is true, then a very solemn personal consideration arises for each of us. If I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons then the kingdom of God is come unto you. It stands beside us. It calls for our obedience. Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone, can cast the evils out of our natures. It is the incarnate Christ, the divine Christ, the crucified Christ, the ascended Christ, the indwelling Christ, who will so fill our hearts that there shall be no aching voids there to invite the return of the expelled tyrants. If any other reformation pass upon us than the thorough one of receiving him by faith into our hearts, then, though they may be swept and garnished, they will be empty, and the demons will come back. With Jesus inside, they will be outside.